Welcome back to CodeGrid everyone. You love the React page transition tutorial, and guess what? You've been asking for it, and now it's here. The next JS page transitions using Framer Motion. Get ready for the easiest and most essential page transition guide on YouTube. But before we dive in, a small favor, show some love by giving this video a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. Now, no more delays, let's jump right into it. First things first, let's create a new project. We'll use Create Next App and name the project Next Transitions. Don't worry about changing any configurations for now, we'll stick to the defaults in this tutorial. After passing through the prompts, our fresh app will be up on desktop. Now, let's navigate to the project folder and open it up in VS Code. Before we proceed, let's clean up the existing files in the project, as we'll be setting up the app manually. Next, create two new folders named Pages and Components in your project directory. Under the Pages folder, go ahead and create a new file named app.js. The app.js file in Next.js is a special file used to override the default app component, allowing you to add global style, layout components, and perform other customization for every page in your application. Inside the app.js, let's begin by importing the use router hook from router. This hook will be our gateway to accessing Next.js router object which provides valuable information about the current route. Next, we define our app component. This component will be the heart of our application, allowing us to customize and enhance our pages globally. It takes two parameters, component and page props, which will be used to render our pages and pass any necessary props to them. Do not forget to export app component. Let's also set up the router by calling the use router hook we imported earlier. Finally, we will add a div element with a unique key that wraps our component in page props. And that's it. We've set up our custom app.js file, equipped with the router, ready to handle page transitions and global configurations for our next application. Let's move on to creating the page.js file inside the components folder. This file will serve as a reusable layout component to wrap the content of our page. It helps keep our code organized and consistent throughout the application. Here, we define a function named page, which takes a single parameter children. The children prop represents the content that will be passed to the component when it's used. Inside the function, we return a JSX template with a main tag wrapping the children. This structure allows us to add any common elements, styles, or layouts we want to apply across all our pages easily. With this page.js component, we'll be able to maintain a consistent layout for our pages. Let's create the index.js file, which will be our home page. Inside this file, we'll import the page component we created earlier. Then, we'll define the home component that represents our home page. Make sure you wrap the content inside page. For this tutorial, we won't have much but just a h1. All right, it's time to get things rolling. To start the server, simply open your terminal and run npm run dev. This will kickstart your development environment and make your next.js app come to life. Let's expand our app by adding two more pages. Create the About and Contact pages under the Pages folder. Each page will have a similar structure to the Index page, with only the H1 content being different. Go ahead and create them to complete the setup. Now, let's create the header.js file inside the Components folder. In this file, we'll create a header component that represents our navigation bar. This will allow users to easily navigate between the different pages of our app. We first import the link component. Next, we define the header component. This component represents our navigation bar, consisting of a logo and a list of header items. Each item is a navigational link created using the link component with appropriate route. Now, after we've added all the links to the header, it's time to import this header component into our page component. By doing this, every page will automatically have the navbar, ensuring consistent navigation throughout our app. With this setup complete, our next.js app is now fully configured with routing. We're all set to dive into the exciting part, adding those mesmerizing page transitions. To begin, open a new terminal tab and install Framer Motion first. 
Once the installation is complete, inside app.js, we need to import motion and animate presence to unleash the full potential of the library. Then, let's wrap our entire app with the animate presence component. Remember to set the mode attribute to wait. We need to convert the wrapping div for the component into a motion div to apply the framer motion transitions to our component. We'll create two more motion divs, one for sliding in from the bottom and the other for sliding out to the top. We'll apply the slide in class to the first one and use the scale Y property with the specified initial, animate, exit, and transition props. Then, duplicate the same for the second motion diff, updating the class name to slide out and the props as mentioned. With these additions, we've set up the core part of our page transitions using Framer Motion. To make everything pop and bring our transitions to life, all that's left is to add some styles. First, under the Pages folder, create a file named global.css. Then, import this file into the app.js file. We're all set to start styling. We'll kick things off by targeting all elements stripping away default margins and paddings, and setting box sizing to border box. Next, we're applying styles to both the HTML and body elements. We set their widths and heights to fill the viewport, and choose New Montreal as our go-to font. Let's move on to the header. We're fixing its position and setting its width to fill the entire container. We use Flexbox to space out its contents evenly. We also add a bit of padding for a cleaner look. We apply Flexbox again to our header items for a horizontal layout. Then, for each header item and the logo, we set some padding to give each element breathing space. For our anchor tags, we remove any default text decorations, set the text color to black, and transform all text to uppercase for a more stylized look. Next up is our H1. We're positioning it absolutely, centering it within its parent using a combination of positioning property and transform. We set text alignment to center, uppercase the text, and set the font weight to a medium 500. Finally, we use a large font size of 100 pixels and adjust the line height to 90% for tight, neat typography. The slide in class we are using for transition has its position set to absolute. Set top and left to zero, having width of 100% and height of 100 bh with a dark background color. Its transform origin set to the bottom. This means when we animate it, it will appear to grow from the bottom. Pretty much same for the slide out too, except the transform origin will be set to top so that it scales down from top. And that brings us to the end, folks. I hope you found this video insightful. If you're keen to dive into the source code directly, simply follow the link in the description. Consider joining our pro membership. For just the cost of a latte, you'll gain exclusive access not only to this source code but also to complete responsive website templates every month, all designed with the flair of our acclaimed websites. I look forward to seeing you in our next video.